Hello there and welcome once again to our business communications program. We are covering a lot of subjects in this program because communications is a very vast subject. We have talked about listening skills in our previous segment and we are now going to move on to a part of communication that involves the art of asking questions. As you know from the subject of listening, that asking clarifying questions and asking questions indeed is a part of active listening. So we're going to move forward on this particular subject and look at how asking questions can enhance our communication ability. First up, I'd just like to ask uh, whether you do ask questions a lot. Are you the type of person that does ask or are you the kind of person who sits back and just takes in what has been said and uh, that is it, you don't uh, ask any clarifying questions? What kind of person are you when it comes to communicating? And as I've said throughout this program, please try to look at yourself. Take time out and take a look at the kind of person you are when it comes to communicating. What kind of listener are you? We've gone through that in our previous program. What kind of listening abilities do you have? What kind of communicator are you? If you remember that, when we talked about directness, indirectedness, supporting and controlling styles of communication. So where do you fit? I hope that, th that by now you are learning a little bit more about yourself because this is the essence to understanding other people. So let's begin with the art of asking questions. We ask questions all the time, actually. Human beings are curious people. Normally we like to ask questions and ever since we're brought up, right from babies up to adults, we ask a lot of questions. Perhaps they're very simple questions at the time, perhaps they become more difficult too and they depend totally on the surroundings around us and the situations. But the point is being able to ask the right question at the right time in order to have effective communication. We've got to be careful how we ask questions, when we ask, what kinds of questions we ask. Sometimes we can send off the wrong message about who we are simply by the kinds of questions that we ask. So why do we really ask questions? Sounds a simple enough question, doesn't it? Well, we ask questions because we want to gain information. And in order to be able to gain information and to know things, and indeed to be able to transfer information, it all depends on questions. For example, who, what, where, when, why, how and how much. These are questioning words for gathering all sorts of information. And we use these questioning words in most of our questions. We ask questions in order to stimulate conversation as well. For socialising, for example, we ask questions all the time. How are you? How have you been? Have you heard such and such? Did you see such and such? Or can you believe? Da 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 da. Or what do you think about such and such? We stimulate our conversation, our communication process is stimulated merely through the fact of asking questions like this when we socialise, when we get together, when we meet other people. They're not meant to harm anybody, they're just inquiring questions. We also ask questions to gain other people's points of view. We won't really know unless we ask. If you need to perhaps know more about what someone else is thinking or what their opinion is of something, then of course you would ask, what do you think about da da da? What do you think about uh, the weather these days and global warming? Can you tell me how you feel about the new guy that we've just recruited? Do you think he's uh, going to work out well? 
we gain other people's points of view through asking questions. And therefore, questions are part of our communication process. Communication is not all about just telling and giving instruction. Communication is also about being curious and questioning. Why do we ask questions? We also ask questions to check that somebody actually agrees with our point of view. What does the other person think about what you've just discussed? What's their take on it? Do you think we are on the right track? Can you support this decision? We ask questions to get confirmation actually of what we have decided to do or to check that somebody agrees with what we are about to do. Are we in agreement? Do you have any objections? How does this sound to you? All of these questions help us in the communication process of knowing whether somebody actually agrees with us or not. So we're getting feedback. We also ask questions to verify information. And asking for feedback is a critical part of the communication process. We could say, did I understand you to mean such and such? Or can I summarize it as this and this and this? We need that acknowledgement. We need that verification that what we have said actually has been understood. So we use questions to verify that the information has been clearly understood. And also, finally, why do we ask questions? We ask questions sometimes to build rapport and trust, to build that bond between two people or a group of people, and to build up the trust that also goes when you have good bonding. Rapport and trust are built by showing support for the other people, for their goals and for their objectives. For example, Showing support, you could say, how can I help you? Or, what can I do to help you meet your objectives? What can we do to help you meet these goals? What would you like to accomplish? Tell me about your goals. Tell me about your dreams. Tell me about the things you want to do in your life. All of these questions are ways of communicating our trust and our desire to build rapport and to develop bonds with each other. So questions are a very important part of the communication process. Not only questions to our children, to our loved ones, to our friends, but questions also in the workplace. Questions among bosses and teams and project teams. Questions between you and uh, your peers, for example. Questions are part of the communication process. So when we look at questions, there are different types of questions. We have to be careful to use the right type of questions in order to gain what we need to get the right information to help us understand better. So there are two major types of questions that we use. The first one is the closed question. Closed questions are generally quite simple questions and they are basically there to gather information, to gather details, facts, etc. And the response to a closed question is usually a yes or a no or a very brief answer of some sort, a few words or just a brief sentence. So, for example, we can see that Typically, closed questions are in the format of, of what time is it, for example, or did you finish the project? What time is it? The answer would be, well, it's six o'clock. Not yes or no here, but you see that the response is quite limited, so it's a closed question. You know that you're going to get a quite limited response. Are you going to the meeting? Yes, I'm going. Or it could be, no. I have no time. Or it could be simply, yes. So this is a closed question, getting a very brief answer. Can you work overtime tonight? 
Or when did you first discover the problem? I first discovered it last week. It came to my attention during the meeting last week. Okay, these are quite brief answers and they come from closed questions. Closed questions will only get you a certain amount of simple information. They allow specific facts to be gathered. They allow you to have an easy answer, so it won't be a difficult answer to have to think through and to work on. For example, specific facts, what color do you prefer? I like red. I prefer red. That's a specific fact you have got from your question. Questions can be easy to answer, closed questions. Will be, you be finished by 5 p.m.? No, I'm sorry, I won't be. That's simple to answer. And the function of closed questions, number three, is they are useful in the feedback process. Well, you need to check on the information, the accuracy or completeness of something. Have I got the information right? Ah, yes, you have. I've got it. So they are meant to perform specific functions. They can be used to gain commitment as well. This is very important as well. So when you are asking these closed questions, you are getting also acceptance and commitment back from the, the person who is answering. For example, does this seem right so far? Yeah, that, that seems fine. That's good. So in the answer to that, you're getting commitment. This is enhancing your communication process. They can be used also as a way to reinforce a positive statement. For example, you might say that this seems like a good plan, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's a great plan. You have now got a reinforcement of something. So your communication process is much clearer as you are getting the answers to your closed questions. Closed questions can be used to direct a conversation to a certain topic or a certain concern. Do you have time to talk about the budget? Ah, uh, yes, I do. So you can use a closed question to redirect uh, or direct the conversation to a particular thing. Using questions, closed questions like this in communication really can enhance the whole communication process. So now we have looked at closed questions. We now go to the second type of question, the open question. And here, open questions are generally much more involved. They are a deeper kind of questioning and they require sometimes a longer and even a more complex answer. They require thinking on the part of the person who's being asked the question and it is really a way to draw out a wide range of responses on a topic. Uh, often people are asked for their opinions and their thoughts and their feelings through open-ended questions. And it is important that if you are asking the questions that you do try to define what is the information you want to gain and therefore you tailor your question accordingly. So if you want to start to enhance your communication process, then open questions are certainly going to give you a lot of information that can help you do that. Open-ended questions can be things like, how did you feel about the meeting? If you said, was the meeting good? You might just get yes or no. That's not really giving you a full answer about the thoughts and opinions and feelings. But if you say, how did you feel about that meeting? You might get a response that is far more intricate and that will give you great insight into what that person is thinking. They might say, oh, I felt that the meeting went on a bit long. I think uh, 
that the speaker should have paid more attention to certain subjects rather than concentrating on da 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 da. And you will find from this example that you get a lot of information and you understand the process much more clearly. Communication is much more vivid and much more in depth. Here you might also ask, what could we do to make this project better? How can we meet our objectives? What is your opinion on the new marketing plan? So, open questions are designed specifically to try to draw from the person who is being asked opinions, their opinions, their thoughts, their feelings. And this communication process is highly valuable when you are wanting to impact your staff and impact your, your whole department or your division. Being able to ask the right questions and the right types of questions are going to show that you are a very good communicator in trying to understand your team and understand your workplace better. Open questions have the following characteristics. They cannot really be answered with a simple yes or no, as I have explained before. And this is the beauty of them. They stop the person who's going to answer by simply answering yes or no. They cannot answer yes or no to an open question. They have to have an opinion or some ideas on it. So when you ask a question like, how do you think we could make this process work better? Then there's no way that that person can avoid giving some response back, giving some detailed thought back to you. Open questions usually ask, oh, begin, sorry, with a what or a how. For example, what do you think about the new benefits policy? And in the previous one, how do you think we could make this process work better? So you are using the what's and the how's in order to begin these open questions. It's important to note that open questions do not lead to an answer. For example, what improvements could we make in the new marketing plan? Here you are asking for an opinion on what those improvements could be. You are not actually saying what the answer should be. So open questions are very, very valuable in, in your workplace, in your communication process, and also to help you improve your communication skills. They draw out ideas and feelings. They let you begin to understand how your people think. Rather than you just assuming, you can draw out information through the art of questioning. For example, you can ask, how do you feel about the reorganization of the department? Instead of, do you like the way we've reorganized the department? Where you'll get yes or no. You can say, how do you feel about the reorganization of the department? So you can see by these examples that I'm going through here that these open questions draw out information. They encourage someone to elaborate, to expand on things. And they could be expanding on problems, expanding on the needs that they have, the wants that they have. What do you think about the new employee review, review system? What do you think? These are examples you can bring up when you want to improve the communication between you and your staff. They also promote self-discovery. How do you think the new process will work for your group? So all of these questions, these types of open-ended questions, are provoking questions. They're designed to elicit or to draw out responses and thoughts and ideas that maybe you never really understood and knew that your people had. So they are a valuable tool in the communication toolkit that you should be keeping with you and using every day in your business life. They stimulate thinking. Open questions are wonderful in that they 
get people to start to think about what is going on, rather than being just a piece in the system or the process. People become a very important part of the process because you can draw out their values and their ideas and views. For example, where do you think we might run into problems with this idea? You are starting to give them ownership through asking questions, getting them to feel that they belong to the team. Open questions allow lots of different responses to come into play. It's important to know which kind of questions, opened or closed though, to use in order to achieve your goals. You have to think about it. Both of these can be very useful and can help you to achieve several different purposes. But you do have to be very careful as to which ones you will use when you communicate. So are you looking for facts? Or are you looking for feelings, all right? So, are you looking at facts? If you're looking for specific information and data, you, you use closed questions, okay? And that is a very simple thing to follow. If you really wish to uh, find out facts about things, this is the way to go. Use closed questions. For example, what did you accomplish on the project? This will generate more detail than, did you get a lot done? So try to be careful and specific with your closed questions. You can get more of a response just than yes and no. If you are looking for feelings, if you are trying to understand people's feelings, then you are looking at open questions. So there is a difference. Fact-finding, you are looking at closed questions, and you get short responses, brief responses, that will help you get facts. If you are looking for feelings and to understand a person more about what their thoughts are, what their opinions, what their views are, then you will use open questions. So remember that. Closed questions for facts, open questions for feelings. Used properly, feeling-finding questions generate a lot of information about attitudes, motivations of people, and their convictions, their dedication to the job, etc. You can find out a lot from a person about with open-ended feeling-finding questions. And this will help you in your coaching process as well. Coaching, communication, the art of questioning, and coaching are very important skills that you need as a manager. So the type of questions you ask are very much a part of the coaching and communication process. These questions are very powerful tools. If you want to clarify things, then you might use closed questions. Closed questions really are there to verify something. Do I understand you correctly? Are you referring to or do you mean? This is a way of confirming things. These are examples of questions which you may ask to make sure you understand that the information, you understand the information being given to you. So they are what we call clarifying questions. So we have fact finding questions, we have feeling finding questions, and we have clarifying questions. And fourth up, we have expanding questions. If you need to uh, draw out further information on a topic, much, much more than, that, than is usual, then you will use open questions to expand on the information, to draw out more detail. One of the very good expanding questions is an open question like, can you give me an example? Or, would you tell me more about that point? Or, what else might be causing a problem? These sorts of expanding questions continue to generate information about a subject, and they are very valuable. In the communication process, you can gain a lot of information, and you can understand clearly where problems exist, and what things you can do to improve things. 
So your questioning skills, your ability to expand and draw out more information, means you are becoming very efficient in communication, a very effective communicator. And finally, there are questions that are directing questions. This means that you are directing to another subject, uh, and so you use a closed question accordingly. We mentioned a little bit about that before. And so directing questions can then move you to another area. For example, what was the other point you wanted to make? Or can we go back and talk about your first item? Or couldn't we postpone the decision for a week? These are questions that move the direction of the subject, of the conversation. So with these questions, you can lead a person to a particular decision or lead them to somewhere else. So in questioning, we have what you need to think about is the goal of the question. Do you want to find out facts? Do you want to find out about feelings? Do you want to find out uh, and clarify information and have it verified? Do you want to expand on the information you have? Or do you want to direct towards some other subject matter or some other topic? So these are the goals you should have in mind when you are designing your questions. And then depending on that, they will be closed or they will be open questions. Some general strategies are needed to be put in place when we use questions. So I'd just like to run you through those and give a bit more information so you can be quite uh, well aware of these strategies. The first most important thing you need to do, and it's all very well to have all these questions going on up in your mind. It's easy to, to write these questions, but the thing you need to do is to have a plan first. Before you begin to ask questions, is what I'm saying, you need to know what it is you want to accomplish through these questions. What is the objective of asking the questions? You cannot just bombard somebody with questions and appear to interrogate them uh, purely uh, for the sake of uh, asking questions. You need to actually have an objective. So. When you know the objective of your questioning, then you can design the types of questions you will need to use, whether they are open or closed, fact, feeling, clarifying, expanding, or directing questions. In advance of your conversation, you should be clear about your objectives. Some people have this in their mind, uh, some people write these things down. They need to plan carefully so that everything is very, very clear. But you must prepare in advance. Don't ever begin a small focus group discussion, for example, or a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, for example, or a meeting even, for example, unless you know what your objectives are and the kinds of questions you need to use to be able to meet those objectives. Next strategy that you can put into place is one that we say is just keep the question simple. It's best to be simple in everything. In communication, simplicity is going to work well for you. So try not to clutter and confuse and make the question so long that it is difficult to understand. It is also best to ask for one answer at a time, not to ask multiple questions that are doubled up with sub-questions within the question. Quite often this happens, you see, in, uh, in discussions on television debates, for example. Someone will say, my question is, la 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 la, and the second part of my question will be, if you do that, can you do that, and then following that, would you be able to such and such? This is double-barreling the question, and it's very confusing, and it leads to confusion in communication. So your objective, your strategy will be to keep the question simple and ask 
one thing at a time. If there are two or three parts in a question, people will tend to answer the last or the first or the part which they feel safe with. So to avoid that and to avoid confusion, really do keep it simple. A strategy you should use is to stay focused. And this goes without saying, actually. But the thing sometimes with questions is people do go off track. I mean, I've seen it many, many times, and I'm sure you have witnessed it. Maybe you have gone off track yourself. Um, keep the questions on track and follow the topic to its conclusion. If you digress too much, then you'll find that it's hard to bring yourself back on track and in focus. If you begin a question with, by the way, that is an indicator. Or if you hear somebody say to you, by the way, that is an indicator that that person has probably changed the subject a little bit and is looking for, looking at a different question or a different subject. It's something that they've just thought of and they've now decided to include it. If that happens, it's best that that is held till later. So it's not squashed in with your focused subject that you are working on at the time. Try to keep the, by the way, questions at the end of the conversation or later on. So stay focused. This is an important strategy and it will really enhance your communication skills. Another strategy which goes without saying, of course, avoid ambiguity. This means uncertainty of what is being said. Don't confuse things. Ambiguous questions will generate ambiguous answers. It is quite a simple process. So that means the clearer your question, the clearer it is to understand your question, then the clearer the answer will be and everybody will benefit. If you continue to ask questions that are cloudy or that are uncertain or that are difficult to decipher what you are actually meaning, then the response you're going to get is not going to be uh, the desired one that's reaching your objectives. You're going to end up with confusion as an answer. So how can you clearly communicate with that? How will your communication suffer? How will it proceed, I mean? it will suffer. So avoid ambiguity. And this means that you have to have a plan in the beginning. Try to uh, know the questions that you are going to ask and be clear about them right from the very beginning. Another strategy with asking questions is to stay non-threatening. Now this means that you're not going to make the person who you are speaking to feel that they are threatened in a way or that they're in trouble, um, that the conversation is not going to go on a dangerous path where emotions might start to fly high. Trust is essential in communication. Trust, and it doesn't matter which kind of communication it is actually, in all communication, trust must be there. So the wrong question can quickly destroy what trust you had with the other person that you're speaking to. It could destroy the relationship. People might get upset or offended that you actually asked certain questions. They might think that you didn't believe them. So you've immediately discounted and broken the trust that you had with that person purely because you asked threatening questions. So stay non-threatening. The wrong questions could be, why didn't you? Or how could you do this? Aren't you supposed to be da-da-da? These are questions which generally make people defensive, meaning they back up and they begin to defend themselves. They feel that they're under threat. Once somebody throws up that wall of defense, then the opportunity to exchange information and build on the relationship disappears. It goes away, out the window. So you have not been effective in your communication. So in communication, to 
develop and maintain trust, always ask questions that are non-threatening, if you can continue with that, if that is the case, if that is possible. It does, of course, depend on the situation. But most communication processes, most uh, times you are communicating in a positive sense to reach a, benef a, a reward or a benefit at the end, you would try to stay non-threatening so that you are enhancing and building up the communication process all the way, all the time. People will really warm to your questions. Once they begin to know the kinds of questions that they ask, they will warm to you and develop those relationships very sincerely with you. People from your team, people who are your peers in your job, will really warm to you. So the idea is to stay non-threatening, if you can, in your communications and the questions that you choose. Ask permission. Also, if the area of questioning, particularly if it is a sensitive area, try to ask questions that are going to mean that you are looking for permission, rather than bombarding and demanding to have some answers. For example, you could ask permission in this style of questioning. The application requires some detail about your financial condition. Would you mind answering da 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 da? Now, in a way, you are asking permission through the style of the question for that financial information. If you said, the application requires us to know what your salary is. Can you tell me what level of salary are you on right now? That kind of question is not a permission-seeking question. That is just a commanding question requiring information and expecting it. So seek permission sometimes when it's a sensitive issue. And in English, using the words, would you mind? Would you mind? These are very delicate and gentle openers to this kind of question. And they soften the approach to the information that's going to come next. So state a little bit about why you need the information and then ask, would you mind? When you do this, your communication ability really does go to the next level. After all, that is what you're trying to do, aren't you? You're trying to improve the level of your communication proficiency. So the questions you ask, the way you ask them, and sometimes the words that you actually use, particularly in English here, really will have an impact on your effectiveness as a communicator. And finally in this segment, when you are asking questions, try to avoid what we call manipulation. That means don't try to uh, trick somebody into giving you an answer uh, and that answer actually, because you've tricked them, is going to actually destroy the, the relationship you have. Keep the relationship as your primary focus. You want to have good relationships all the time. Trick answers, trick questions are not the way to go in communications. You will destroy any valuable relationship you had with someone if you throw in trick questions or if you try to manipulate the situation. For example, would you prefer to work overtime tonight or tomorrow night? This is more or less forcing somebody to actually work the overtime. They may not want to work overtime at all. But here you have manipulated or perhaps tricked them in a way to, to doing what you want them to do. So this kind of manipulating question doesn't give the person a chance to say that he doesn't want to work the overtime at all. So it's not really very fair. Think about that. Fairness is very important when you ask questions. Being fair in how you treat your subordinates and the people around you is very essential to being a good communicator.
So explaining the need for the overtime in this instance and asking if he is available has a totally different feel. You could say, we are really uh, facing a difficult time and we need to clear a lot of the backlog, backlog that we've, we've got in the office. How would you feel about uh, working overtime sometime this week? Would that be okay for you? These are questions you could ask, rather than manipulating somebody into feeling they are obliged to do something. Manipulation, in a way, is an attempt to take away a person's control of something, and that's not a very good thing to do. And as a manager, that's not a very good way to go about your business of managing your people. So the art of questioning is a very, very important skill. It is one that is going to help you improve your ability to communicate. As we have gone through this program, we have seen that communication takes many, many forms. There are many, many integral parts to communication. We begin with understanding the kind of communicator we are, knowing uh, our behaviours. We also look at our listening abilities and uh, verbal and non-verbal communication. We also take a look at empathy and the verbal skills that we can use when we're also learning the art of questioning as we've just covered in this session. So I do hope that you have gained some very important points along the way as we've talked about questioning. Remember, questioning can be done in a very positive way. Question time is not always meant to be an unpleasant time. Questioning can form the very important part of the process of communication that builds the bonds between you and the person to whom you are speaking. Thank you very much for listening and we will see each other again in the next part of our communication process which involves feedback. Feedback as part of the communication process we have discussed. Thank you very much.